Hi, I'm Van and welcome to Overland Lab. Today I want to talk to you about vehicle recovery and the sorts of equipment that I carry with me to prepare for the inevitability of getting stuck. Vehicle recovery is one of the most important skills an off-roader can master and it is also one of the most dangerous because you have a lot of, you're asking a lot of your equipment and you've got a lot of dangerous moving parts and you've got a lot on the line, both your, your own safety and the safety of your vehicle. So it's worth being appropriately prepared for it because it's never an if and it's always a when. We always try to keep ourselves out of situations where we get badly stuck or off-centered or high-centered, but sometimes it's unavoidable and sometimes mistakes happen. So it's worth being prepared and having the right kind of equipment for the job. Before you even leave for your adventure, I'd say there's two major important um, bits that you need to figure out. One, to be able to appropriately select the kind of equipment you need, you need to know your vehicle's weight. That is to say, not your vehicle unloaded, your vehicle with all your camping gear, rooftop tent, hardware, refrigerators, everything that you're gonna carry with you when you go out on your adventures. A lot of places have weigh bridges that you can weigh your vehicle. For example, scrap yards and dumps often do. And usually if you look around, you can find someone with a weigh bridge that's willing to tell you. It's also important to have good recovery points on your vehicle. Make sure that you're not trying to recover from tow points. Tow points are intended only for flat towing of a vehicle and also attaching the vehicle to a trailer for transport. They are not intended for the heavy duty usage of a dynamic recovery. Now, before you even leave, a couple of basic pieces of safety equipment that I won't belabor too extensively that I'm assuming you already have in your vehicle. I'm assuming you already have a good set of heavy duty jumper cables. These are two AWG all copper jumper cables from DECA. They got some nice heavy duty clamps in there, good and heavy. Make sure you have a good set of jumper cables appropriate for your vehicle. I'm also assuming that you've already got a nice fire extinguisher. Make sure you check the, the gauge. I did find one of these completely discharged for some reason in the cab of my truck, so check these and inspect them periodically. I prefer an ABC style fire extinguisher so that you can cover the largest variety of different kind of fires that you could encounter. And also make sure you have a good fully stocked first aid kit. If you do end up using this for any reason, make sure you do restock it and make sure it covers the kinds of injuries that you're likely or even kind of unlikely to encounter. Now, with all that said, as far as some of the equipment that you might actually need for recovery, which all lives in this deck drawer, first and foremost, make sure you have a pair of gloves. You've got a lot of pinch points, you're dealing with a lot of different kinds of equipment, and sometimes you're just getting in a really dirty situation. It's nice to be able to take your gloves off, have clean hands, especially when you need to climb back in your vehicle. You know, a basic set of leather gloves will do. They make heavy duty winch gloves. These are fine as well, but a basic set of leather gloves will cover, cover most, of your, uh, most of your recovery needs. <clears throat> The next factor that you need to consider is how you're gonna go about attaching your recovery straps to your vehicle. There's a couple different points you need to consider. If you have like loop style recovery points that are intended to be used with some sort of a shackle, you need to make sure you have some kind of a shackle. Your standard bow shackles are the most commonly used in recovery. Um, they do have a working load limit. Most three quarter tons are usually like four and three quarters of a ton. And they're plenty heavy duty. The downside with a standard bow shackle is that they're very heavy, but the advantage is they're very affordable. The problem is that these do sometimes break. And when they break, this is a very heavy projectile and this can damage a vehicle and could absolutely kill somebody. So one way you can circumvent that, even though it's not necessarily as cheap as a nice three quarter inch bow shackle, is a nice soft shackle. This one's made by Bubba Rope. This is the Gator Jaw. It's made out of 7 16 plasma rope. The brake strength on this guy is about 32,000 pounds. So this is actually stronger than a heavy duty three quarter inch bow shackle. They are more expensive, but I'm gonna start phasing out all of my steel bow shackles in favor of soft shackles. They're just, they're lighter, they float, they're brightly colored, they're hard to lose. They're just an all around great piece of equipment. Uh, another piece of equipment that you might be dealing with, if you're dealing with a recovery point from a two inch receiver, you can attach a strap directly with some kind of a hitch pin, either a heavy duty grade eight hitch pin like this, or just a standard hitch pin that you might have for a trailer, something like this. You can attach a strap directly to a hitch using one of these. I don't prefer to do that because I'm fearful of um, burrs around the hitch fraying the strap. So how I circumvent that is I use a hitch link. 
There's lots of good ste heavy duty steel ones out on the market. I prefer the aluminum Factor 55 hitch link. They are substantially more money than a standard steel one. But when it comes to recovery equipment, I think it's worth spending a little extra money, especially considering the amount of um, kinetic and potential energy that you're dealing with when you're covering a vehicle, particularly a heavy vehicle like an F-150 or a th any half or three quarter ton truck. The hitch link's rated for 9,500 pounds. Uh, that's its max load. Its brake strength is something absurd. The nice thing about Factor 55 is they do destructive testing on all of their equipment so you know exactly how hardcore of a piece of equipment you're dealing with. These also make setting up the recovery a little bit easier and I'm just, I'm just a big fan. It's a nice simple piece of equipment not only for your own vehicle, but also if you're recovering someone else and the only recovery point they have is either a class three or a class four two inch receiver like this F-150 has. Uh, the next major piece of equipment that you're gonna need for recovery and probably the simplest, most commonly used piece of recovery equipment is a basic recovery strap. Now, recovery straps are different from toe straps. Toe straps are heavy duty and only intended for flat towing a vehicle. They are not intended for a dynamic recovery. Recovery straps have a little bit of flex and give to them so that instead of it just being a hard pull, it actually builds up a little bit of potential energy and helps extract you. These are different than a kinetic rope or a snatch rope or a snatch strap, which are designed to stretch even more to build up even more potential energy. I don't have a kinetic rope, I'd like to get one. Picking out your ropes and straps is really important and this is where knowing the weight of your vehicle comes in handy. For a recovery strap, you generally want to have something that the brake strength is double the fully loaded weight of your vehicle at least. With a kinetic rope, it's a little more, it's a little more nuanced. You wanna pick out uh, a weighted strap such that it can build up enough potential energy to be able to extract you. If you pick too heavy duty of a strap, you will not be able to build up enough potential energy and now you're back to being a, uh, basically being a recovery strap. With kinetic rope, the general rule of thumb is you wanna pick a, uh, a rope that the brake strength is three times the weight of your vehicle. So for example, if you have a 5,000 pound SUV, you want a recovery rope, or I should say a kinetic rope, that's at least, brake break strength is at least 15,000 pounds. And you wanna be as close to that number as possible. So for example, for this truck, a 7 8 inch um, kinetic rope rated for about 29,000 pounds or 27,000 pounds is about appropriate. Whereas like a 19,000 pound kinetic rope wouldn't be strong enough to, to extract this vehicle. Now once you have your recovery points figured out, your rigging, necessary rigging and shackles figured out, and your uh, good appropriate recovery strap figured out. You're prepared for the vast majority of two vehicle recoveries that you're going to come across. The problem is that depends on having another vehicle to be able to pull you out, and that is not always the case. Sometimes we get separated, sometimes we go out by ourselves, and sometimes you just can't plan for the unexpected. When that's the case, self-recovery becomes the name of the day. Self-recovery tends to be a little riskier because now you're depending upon yourself and you can't be in you know, more than one place at a time. So two vehicle recoveries are always preferred, but sometimes you just gotta go it alone. When you do get stuck when you're out by yourself, having a winch helps immensely. Um, I'm not gonna cover winches, winching, or all the necessary accessories in this video. That's gonna be a separate video and I'll talk about my winch setup but it is one way you can self-recover. The other way that's becoming increasingly more popular is using some sort of a heavy-duty recovery board. These are the Maxa Escaper Buddies. These are in the, have been in the project for a while and I'm still in the process of testing them. But basically the idea is these give you something to drive up on so that you can extract yourself from wherever it is you get stuck, whether you're stuck in mud or sand or anything like that. These give you traction to drive up on and then allow you to build up momentum from there. Another way you can recover yourself is using a high lift. Um, a high lift and all the odds and ends accessories that go with it I think is deserving of its own video, but they can be used for um, various kinds of vehicle manipulation, lifting the vehicle so that you can put rocks under wheels, and they can also be used for winching as well, assuming you have the uh, high lift winching kit. Now, by no means do I intend this video to be an exhaustive list of all sorts of recovery equipment. I just wanted to cover some of the basics and tell you a little bit about the kind of equipment that I carry with me to make sure I kind of have my bases covered. Hopefully you found this video to be helpful. 
Uh, if you have any questions, go, go ahead and feel free to ask them in the comments. Please do subscribe if you have not already. And also be sure to check out rootsgameandtrail.com for all of your uh, outdoors and adventure needs. So thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.